I know, I know. Hmm. Okay, we're good to go. Let's see what I want to watch today. Turn the TV on. How will I watch TV if the TV doesn't come on? Alright, I'm watching TV till somebody comes in here.
I love sports game shows. I love reality shows where they're like doing competitions. Who's the one person in here? What are you doing, creeping? How can you answer yes to the poll if you haven't actually left a comment? That's called lying. As so much as I love game shows, I like to see ah, my hamstrings cramping. I like to see athletic people playing these games. Let's see what else. One second, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Mucho bla bla bla. I do like drama. I can't lie, I like drama. I was about to change, but then they started arguing. This makes up for their on athleticism.
Why are you just sitting there? I'm watching TV. Why are you not sitting here watching TV? What are you doing over there? Every, every time I get on live, I wait for people to come into the chat. Until people come into the chat, I watch shows that I like to watch. something good to watch on TV. They bored me again. Let's see. We got... Hmm. Nah, I'll never watch Fruitvale Station again. The real, the real incident and the movie traumatized me, bro. I'll never watch that again. I always watch that though. I'm trying to trying to watch something else. Piece. No, never gonna watch One Piece. But Rick and Morty comes on after One Piece, so I might watch that. Let's see what season it is. Episode 4, Season 2, Total Recall. What time is it? 8.56? Oh, Rick and Morty should be coming on right now. I'm gonna watch Rick and Morty. Until Rick and Morty comes on, I'll be bored. Who is the one person sitting in this chat not saying anything? That's crazy, bro. And to the one person that's sitting in here, have you ever watched a show called One Piece? It's an anime.
wonder where's my usual squad at. Rolando's not here. Mike's not here. None of my people are here. I gotta wait on them to come to get the chat lit. Cause the rest of y'all motherfuckers don't be talking. Edwin, buenas, como estas, bro? belated birthday thank you bro appreciate it i'm feeling older i'm feeling old nah nah actually i actually feel really young 32 is not old i thought it was old when i was younger but now i know it's not that old when my sister turned 32 when i was younger i was like oh my gosh she's almost 40 but now Man, 32 so young, man. How old did you tell me you were at 130, right? How did I celebrate? Um, I went and got a tattoo and I ate some good food. Some good food, some steak, bro. There's nothing that I love more in the world than steak. No, that's a lie. There's one thing. It's called a pazuki. Do you know what a pazuki is, Edwin? Spelled like, oh, how do you spell Pazuki? P I Z O O K I E. It's a big cookie, and they put ice cream on top of the cookie, and it melts on the cookie. It's so good, bro. It's a pizza cookie. I saw your post, Why the Tattoo, though? Why? Because it's not the only tattoo that I have of a warrior. I have a bunch of tattoos of warriors, if you didn't know. I have another one right here. I don't think you can see it, but I got one here. And I got one here, of La Wicole. Um, Cause I'm a fighter and I love warriors, bro. So the tattoo that I just got, it's got Babino, bro, from Peru. Aventuras sin limite, hola. Como esta usted? What up, Rolando? I was just talking about you, bro. I was like, where's my squad at, dog? Where's my, my loyal people that come in here every time? It was quiet up in here, man. I listened to that. I listened to that song, by the way. Threshold says... Todo bien. No falo portugués.
Do a little bang, do a little bang. Voyager. Wait, why'd you put Voyager? Edwin, you wanna know something funny? You need another tattoo, this is a sign. I just got a tattoo yesterday. <laughs> but I probably, I will probably get one again. Uh, maybe, I don't know, within a month. I have nothing better to do, so. But Edwin, anytime I order something on Rappi, my auto correct, so like, the, you know, the people show up and they say, hey, it's the afuera, whatever. Every time I type boy, I type boy, and I, right when I hit send, it changes, my autocorrect changes it to Voyager. I understood Voyager, the tattoo. No, Warrior, como Guerrero. I love that guitar solo. It was a dope song. Not 100% my style, but I'm I'm a fan of music. Um so I, I enjoyed it. Yesterday the dude that did my tattoo, this dude was a serious music head. And like every song that I told him about, he's like, Oh yeah, I know that song and then he'll pull it up. I'm like, bro, you know as many songs as me, that's crazy, bro. He knew all the lyrics and stuff too. Man, I was pulling up like Songs from, I don't even know, bro, from Spain, from Argentina. And he was like, oh, yeah, that's my favorite. That reminds me of this. And I'll be like, bro, I love this song. We was literally just jamming out the whole session. Because originally he was listening to, like, some Spanish, like, rock. And I asked him what the genre was. And I'm like, oh, that kind of reminds me of, uh, what is the group called? El Cuarteto de Nos. How long have you been doing Muay Thai? I don't do Muay Thai, bro. I'm a pure boxer, 100%, bro. See these tattoos? These are boxing gloves, bro. Never done Muay Thai before. Well, that's a lie. Let me not say I've never done it, but I've never trained it seriously. But I did have a friend that was really good at Muay Thai, and he taught me some stuff. But... I would never compete in that shit. What made you what made you say that? Where did that come from? Did I receive any birthday presents? Technically, no, well not technically. My tattoo is a birthday present from my wife. But besides that, no. Because once you get old, nobody cares about your birthday. Nobody gives you anything, bro. <laughs> Unless it's an important birthday. Like 21, 30, maybe 40. But no. No presents for me. You look like you're capable of hurting someone for 10% off of a 12-way subway sandwich. Uh, nah, man. I am against violence unless I have to. If it's not in the ring, then I'm like, I shouldn't fight. Not anymore. I'm past that stage of life. Too many fights, man. Can you see? You see all the times I've messed up my knuckles, bro. Broken hands. That's the first thing I look at on people. I always look at their knuckles. Knuckles, then ears. 
See, my ears are clean. I got no, no cauliflower ear, so you know. You know I don't wrestle like that. <laughs> if I see someone with cauliflower ear, the red flag. I'm like, all right, let me be careful. And if it does get crazy, I need to hurry up and punch them. What did your CT scan come back with? It said I was just, there's just nothing but gray matter in here. There's no brain, it's just all liquid, bro. I don't even know what I'm saying right now. I can't even read. Nah, but all jokes aside, I'm a very defensive fighter. Always have been. I will not get punched in the face for no reason, bro. You're gonna have to show me that you're good. I'm not gonna just stand toe to toe with you and swing until one of us gets knocked out. Honestly, for the amount of time that I've done everything that I've done, the worst injuries that I've had are my hands. I've never... I had a, I, had, I think I had a mild concussion one time, to be honest. But that's just the, that's just the game. Like you get hit hard enough, your shit's gonna hurt. Your head's gonna hurt the next day. But uh, I've never had a broken nose. I've never, I've never even had a black eye before, bro. I mean, I'm black, so maybe I have, and it just didn't show up like that. But <laughs> yeah, I, I take pride in making people miss and making people pay. It's the same genre as Nirvana. I thought I clicked in. I typed it a long time ago. What are you saying? Audio Slave is the same genre? Or something that I said? I don't know. Pretty sure I've gotten concussions from football and never noticed. I actually read a really interesting study one time, and it's the reason that I actually won't let my kids play football if I have any. Um, if you make it to the NFL, you have basically a hundred percent chance of getting CTE. In this study, ninety-nine percent of the brains they examined uh, from the NFL has CTE. Ninety-seven percent from college football players has CTE. And if you made it to like varsity high school football, it was like 93 or 91 percent, something like that. But I'm like, damn, bro, like you don't have a chance, bro. And you never know how that CTE is going to affect you. So I just I'm just like, bro, there's other sports. There's other sports, man. If you just really like step back and look at football, it's, it's a kind of crazy sport. Even with the helmets, bro. Or maybe not even with, maybe because of the helmets. <laughs> the impacts are just crazy, bro. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like boxing in a sense. Boxing wasn't that dangerous until they started making gloves. Because then you could take a lot more blows to the head. When it was bare knuckle, you would break your hands. If you, if you hit somebody too many times or in the hardest part of their head so you had to be careful that's why that's why fights used to last so long you hear about these like 30 round fights and shit because they couldn't hit each other like that what is the cte um actually you know what? i can't remember what the letters stand for somebody can google that for me but i want to say no i'm not even gonna guess it's like something that i know in the back of my head but now that you ask me what it is i don't know but basically it's your brain swelling and uh, it actually changes your brain, the, the trauma. And so you see like uh, Aaron Hernandez and a lot of these other dudes that kind of just snap one day, whether it's being suicidal or homicidal, um, they always have brain problems. But no one ever wants to blame football. They're like, no, well, he has some other stuff going on. I'm, sub I'm guessing that middle word is traumatic. Okay. Chronic traumatic encephal encephal 
encephalopathy? I don't know how to fucking say that shit. That's my CTE showing right there. <laughs> nah, but for real. Um, if I had to guess what it was from those words, I would say that it's your brain being permanently inflamed instead of, you know, when you get a concussion, your shit's, your shit's messed up for a little bit and then it kind of goes back to normal. But the chronic, to me, signifies that your shit ain't going back down. It's a broad term to, it's a broad term used to describe any disease or disorder that affects the brain. See, that's even worse because since it covers anything, basically anything that's happened to, happening to these guys should be considered CTE. But they're always like, no, it's not CTE, it's something else. And they told us that if we want a chance to go to college, that we should secure a scholarship. Yeah, like I said, man, there's other sports. There's other sports, bro. Basketball, baseball. I mean, you could definitely, uh, you can definitely get hit in baseball in the head with a baseball, but it's unlikely. Path equals disease. That word equals brain. Greek roots. Makes sense. Baseball is a good sport. Minimal damage, high money. Basketball is cool, but you're probably not gonna make it to the highest level. It's too, too few spots. Uh, very high skill, and if you're short, it's even harder. Golf's cool. I don't know how easy it is to make it to the top. Tennis is rough, I've heard on the body, but you ain't gonna get CTE. Tennis is cool. Track and field's cool, but you're not gonna get paid. Psychopath means mind disease. I mean, that would make sense because sociopath would be some kind of pathology with being social, which is why now they call it uh, anti-social fucking whatever. Anti-social personality disorder. Bro, they tell me Rick and Morty was coming on. It just keeps playing One Piece. I'm getting pissed off. I do not want to watch One Piece, bro. Keeps texting me. Okay, now I think Rick and Morty's coming on. Let me put this shit in English. This shit does not sound right in Spanish. The root for autism is the Greek autos, autos, 
which means self, I think. That's weird. Why is that? Why is that the uh. What's that about, Orlando? I wonder why. I'm trying to make the connection between autism and why they named it that. sense because in Spanish everything that starts with all oh, is related to self done it's true but why is it an ism I'm walking here. What am I watching? I'm watching Rick and Morty. You ever seen Rick and Morty? That's so stereotypical New York. That's the whole point, bro. <laughs> You've never watched? You gotta watch it, man. It's a funny show.
I haven't watched cartoons in a long time. I used to watch The Simpsons and Futurama. Futurama is good. I never really cared for The Simpsons. It's okay, but. What are y'all doing, man? It's a Wednesday night. Is it Wednesday? Yeah, it's a Wednesday night. Somebody has sent me like 20 messages on WhatsApp. I'm about to block whoever it is. Remember the barbecue. You know what, Pencil Trying to get like you. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? 295 pounds for a cannon jerk. That's crazy. Uh, that's not that crazy. What's the most I've ever done? Done 375 in competition. But I got a teammate that's done even more. And he weighed less than me when he did it. He did, what did he do, 182? What is that, like 400? 400 and... No, 186, 96. So 182 is like 400. But if you ever see like the guys at the Olympics and stuff, man, they, they do so much more than that. That's why like, it's funny. Cause you know, if you in a regular gym, like of course I'm stronger than most people there, or everybody there, but when you go to these higher level competitions, man, there's girls. Like I could show you a girl clean and jerking 380 pounds. How's everything? How's wifey doing? Everything's good, man. Chilling. Chilling. Everything's great. Can't complain as long as I'm alive, man. Well, I guess I couldn't complain if I was dead either, but <laughs> I'm blessed, bro. I'm alive. Living life. Compared to the world average, you are top one percent. One percent. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's why I always had to tell my clients when they ever they complain like, ah, oh, I wish I was stronger. I'm like, bro, most people in the world can't bench 315 pounds. So they feel weak because, you know, for the same reason you see other people doing whatever. But I'm just like, bro, you got to step back a little bit and realize how strong you are compared to 
probably like, you know, 99 out of 100 people that you're going to encounter. But when you surround yourself with only competitors, your 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 worldview is a little bit shifted, right? So, um, you know, it's just the way it is. I don't think I'm weak or anything, but I just, like I said, when you've lifted next to these people, you know that you're not the strongest guy in the world. Who'd I, uh, Red beard equals muscle. A lot of people ask me that. Uh, that's not why my beard is red. But I did grow up in a Muslim family, but it has nothing to do with my beard. Y'all watch Rick and Morty or nah? seen this episode I'm trying to figure out how they're gonna get out of it stuff in my time whatever I want to do with my time I could say that about anything you do as well I could say that about you being on YouTube actually you're watching a guy watching TV that has to be worse than watching TV to be honest I think I know how they're gonna get out of it Jeff Ross's voice? I don't, I don't know. Is Jeff Ross the bald white dude? I can't remember who Jeff Ross is. Very true. I think anything is okay in moderation. Not anything, but a lot of things. If you sit around and watch TV for 12 hours a day with absolutely no purpose, probably not great for you. Um... But you can actually learn some things from TV. That's not what I'm doing, but <laughs> that is what you can do. I used to use TV a lot uh, to learn Spanish. Do you think these animated shows are meant for kids? Because I watched some videos about hidden messages and some cartoon shows. Uh... It depends. Like, this is Adult Swim, so no, this isn't for kids. But there are some cartoons that are for kids that have dirty shit in it because there's perverts that make this shit. Um, like, Nickelodeon had a lot of perverts working in it, so there was a lot of perverted stuff in the shows. But if there's something perverted in this, it's cool because it's for adults, it's not for kids. He goes on Comedy Central to roast. Oh, yeah, I took a picture of that dude in Austin. 
I know who you're talking about. I don't even know his name. I was just like, yo. And I was just like, yo, let's take a picture. And he was like, cool. If you want, I'll send you the picture right now. Actually, I can send you the picture right now. You can tell me when I get back on if that's Jeff Ross. Because I don't know. I think I'm thinking of the same person. I did not predict this ending. Nothing comes up? What do you mean nothing comes up? What does that mean? birthday room. Kendrick over Drake, let's go. I don't really rock with Kendrick Lamar, bro. I just, just don't like his voice, bro. Ricky, Morty, Jeff Ross. I mean, yeah, I didn't think I heard his voice, but I don't really know what he sounds like, so... Diseased Kodak. What's up, bro? How you doing? What's up with that name, bro? Andrew from Mike Ben, first time watching you though, what's going on? Oh what's up, man? Nothing's going on, man. We're just talking. We just talk about everything, bro. Everything. Shama. 
thoughts on the fight Saturday? I'm guessing you're talking about Ryan and Devin. I don't know, bro. I really just don't know what Ryan's mind state is, to be honest. I literally can't tell if he's trolling. I, I don't. I think the level of trolling is too high for me to believe that it's trolling. That doesn't mean that he can't win the fight. I just can't be sure with the pick because I don't know what he's going to look like. I don't even know if he's going to make weight, bro. Like, he's been drinking this week. That's really weird, bro. But I suspect that he has anxiety problems and I think he's I think it's a defense mechanism and he's trying to make this as not serious as possible so that he doesn't get in his own head about it. Because um, he's been training. I've seen the training videos. He looks like in shape. But he's just doing too much, bro. Like way too much. Um, so I don't know, man. You know me, man. I'm like 98 out of 100 with my picks. But I can't even pick on this one, bro. I haven't seen... I haven't seen Haney take enough clean shots from young guys to know what his chin is like for real. So if Ryan can make contact, we'll see. But the thing is, Haney could just be on his bike and I'll box him for 12 rounds. It could be hella boring for all I know. He's doing the most for real, for real. Ryan's bugging out, hell yeah. You use Mike's book or Madrigals to learn Spanish? I ordered them both, but I gotta start with one. Uh, I didn't really use either. Me and Mike basic, uh, no, Mike started learning Spanish before me, but by the time I found Mike, I was already like speaking. And then on top of that, he didn't make his book until I was like probably like two years into my journey or something. And as far as Madrigals, it was like the same thing. Like I would always see people recommend it and stuff, but I was already like too far along. I bought it and I bought his too, just to read them. Cause I, I'm, I'm cool with Mike. And so I did a review on his book on YouTube one time. And as far as Madrigals, I just wanted to read it just cause everyone said it helped them so much. Um, I like both of them. I think Mike's, Mike's book covers a little bit more cause it's more recent. Madrigals was missing something. What was it? They were missing, like... I think they were missing... It was it was one conjugation. I can't think of it off the top of my head. It's, like, missing, like, the two conjugation or something like that. But I'm, like... I feel like it's pretty essential to just not put it in there. So you think if Ryan Garcia was totally mentally there, he would have it in the bag? I wouldn't say he would have it in the bag... But based on their history, they fought each other, what, six times in the amateurs? And they were three and three. I know that was a little while ago and they were younger and they have headgear. But I actually think the headgear benefits Devin Haney because when you go pro, the gloves are smaller and you don't have headgear, which means the shots hurt a lot more. So if Ryan, who's not known to be super technical, was what and what with him in the amateurs, it could be that his power is too much for him as a pro, but we're not going to know until they start swinging at each other. Because there's been a lot of stories like that. Anthony Joshua, Dylan White, and a couple other people where they fought each other in the amateurs and they're like, man, I got his number. I beat him every time as an amateur. And then they get fucked up as a pro because it's literally different. It's not the same things. Trying to score points with punches and trying to knock somebody out with those little ass gloves on, very, very different. So... I can't say he would have it in a bag, but I would give him more of a chance. Um, because even, like, for instance, with Tank, like, Tank is Tank has a way better boxing IQ than Ryan, but he still had to, he still kind of had to wait a little bit to put him out because Ryan was so dangerous. Um, Ryan just has no, his head's just not there, bro. Even in the tank fight, like, he got frustrated and he just started throwing punches. Like, bro, what are you doing? Stick to the game plan. Like, yeah, so I don't know. You never know with that guy, bro. I think even if he wins this fight, <laughs> he'll probably go off the rails and lose the next one or something like that. I can speak a little bit and listen to a lot, but I really got to learn the proper way with past and future tense and everything. 
Yeah, that's important, man. I always say, like, most conversations are held in the past and in the future. You know, like, what did you do today? What did you eat today? What are you going to do this weekend? Um, are you going to watch this? Have you watched this? It's all here and here. And most of the time when you're talking about the present, it's just things that you do habitually. Um, you know, like, oh, I wake up at seven to go to work every day. Oh, I like to go to the gym at this time. It happens. But I think most real conversations are not held in the present. But just, uh, you know, keep chugging along, bro. Keep chugging along. Try to address your weaknesses. It sucks, but that's the way to get better. You just got to get uncomfortable, bro. If you can get a, like a native speaker to, to be your language partner, that will help you. Lofo, hola en vivo. Hey, como esta usted? Como esta lofo? Yeah, the books will help, but you gotta remember too, reading, speaking, listening, what, I missed one, oh, writing. Those are all four different skills, right? So there's lots of people that, you hear this a lot, you hear, oh, I can understand a lot, or, oh, if it's written, I can read a lot, but they can't speak. They have trouble in conversations, because it's totally different. You can be illiterate, bro, and you can, R. Kelly, Fantasia, all these people, they can't read or write for shit. They can have regular conversations. They can make music. People can make poetry. Nick Cannon, Drumline, you can't read for shit, but you can play beautiful music. It's just totally different. So he's fun adelante. Pero no hablas inglés. Yeah, totally different skills. So just make sure even if you're doing other things, like all input is good, don't get me wrong. I like reading, I like listening to podcasts and stuff like that, but you still have to talk if you wanna get better at talking. There's no, there's no way, no easy way around it. It's just, it's just what has to be done. I Google why autism is called autism. The term autism first was used by psychiatrist Eugene Bueller in 1908. He used it to describe a schizophrenic patient who had withdrawn into his own world. Nah, that's what I was looking for. I was like, okay, self and ism. I'm like, what's the connection there? That makes sense. You become all about yourself or you are all about yourself. Jalen's spitting right now. Salute. Appreciate your advice. Gonna head out, but nice talking for a bit. Salute. Thanks for coming in, bro. See you next time or another time. But yeah, man, that uh, that Garcia Haney fight is gonna be interesting. Sí, soy de los Estados Unidos, pero actualmente vivo en Colombia. thoughts on rap beef or if you're just indifferent to it oh uh, i need a more specific question than that bro i i like rap beef i just don't like the results of beef that's not on wax you feel me like if it's uh like real beef i don't want to see 23 year olds killing each other bro i'm just i'm too old for that i can't support it i'm not gonna act like i don't listen to it but i can't support it though i can't be like oh i love rap beef i just can't do that bro i can be like oh yeah that this was hard but then i think like bro this dude gonna get killed over this bro 
A loco, eres de Karen, vivo en Karen. Que suerte. Yeah, so I mean, I like competitive rap beef. I like beef when they're like keeping it on wax 100%. Like, I think J. Cole was weird for that apology. Because uh, that wasn't like real beef. Like, why'd you apologize, bro? <laughs> like, I don't, I, I, I'm real confused by that. See, all this stuff that's happening, like Rick Ross, Drake, and stuff, that seems like it could spill over in the real life. They're starting to talk about each other's like families and saying all kinds of crazy stuff. But the the original stuff, Kendrick was just keeping it all lyrical, so I don't know what J. Cole was on, bro. That was just strange to me. Lopo, has vivido aquí toda la vida o qué? Y si tu respuesta es sí, ¿te gusta vivir acá? It's cool if it's only on the be only. Yeah, facts, bro. Yeah, I just, man. I don't know if you ever heard, like, them little dudes from Jacksonville, like, uh, Fulio and all of those dudes. Man, that shit is sad, bro. Like, they be, like, I mean, even in New York, too. Everybody, all, the, all of the kids, bro. Chicago, Florida, everywhere, bro. Texas. All the drill stuff is, like, they're actually killing each other and they're actually rapping about it. And I'm like, oh, now that I've seen the news story, this is like, this is weird for me to listen to, bro. Like, I just feel like bad. That's what I've never liked about rap culture, all the dissing, how much of a role it does, how much of a role does dissing play in rap culture? Um, That's tough. It, it's a huge part of rap culture, but like I said, it didn't start off. That's why, like, it was called keeping it on wax. Wax being referring to the the disc. It started off as being a competitive thing, but what happens now is that like drill artists, their beef is their beef doesn't start as rap. Their beef is in the streets, and they're using the rap to hum humiliate each other, which is different. Uh. You know, it, it would be like, let's just say you had a YouTube channel, I have a YouTube channel, we make the same content, and I'm like, hey, I think I can do this better than Rolando. And I make a video, and then you're like, you know what, I challenge you to read this many books, or I challenge you to say this many words, or something like that, and we just go back and forth. That's good for our audience, that's good for us, we're challenging each other and ourselves, it's a like friendly competition. Now, if I don't like you in real life, and you don't even have a YouTube channel and I start saying stuff about your family and stuff, that's not the same thing, it's totally different. And that's kind of what rap has turned into, but that's not what it was a long time ago. Jalen, is that your face printed on your t-shirt? Yes, it is. That is me. Sí, a veces siento que soy el único acá en Cali. Me suscribo a mi tu canal. Muchas gracias. Salute. Loco, ¿cuántos años tienes? ¿Qué te gusta hacer en Cali, bro?
viajar en diferentes lugares. ¿Cómo así? ¿Dónde? Y conocer a nueva gente. ¿En qué barrio vives? Si lo ve, he escuchado que es muy peligroso allá. Sí, ok. Sí. He escuchado, bro. Pero el, el barrio ha mejorado. Oh, ok. ¿Cuánto tiempo, ¿En cuánto tiempo aprendiste español? Hace como tres años y medio. Fue difícil, sí, a veces. Corridos tumbados, groups are getting into dissing, and I'm not liking the way regional is heading. If that continues, who's dissing who? I haven't heard any disses. I don't follow the genre like that though, so I don't know. But what what you had to be thinking of a diss in your mind when you said that. So what happened? Oh no, I'm on 10%. Here's my charger. My charger's so far away, bro. in business baby I can't remember the groups off the top of my head but they were taking oh they were talking I thought you said taking a shit I was like what the they were talking shit at a concert saying no estamos aquí para hacer amigos and I feel like that's not that bad like I said man for me the line crossing is like talking about people's families 
and dissing the dead, bro. That's just like, nah, that's not okay. Do, 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 do. All right, it's time to watch something else. I've actually seen this episode of Rick and Morty, but until I find something else, you guys should talk more. Rolando, have you ever seen Sharknado, bro? this channel yeah but sharknado with a d like a shark plus a tornado i don't know it's one of those corny science fiction movies but i don't have the channel dog so i gotta find something else they chainsaw they chainsaw the shark i, I never even watched it is the Oedipus complex legit? I mean, <laughs> it just depends on who you ask. You definitely see it a lot. I think every theory in the world has like some legitimacy to it. Definitely see it a lot. Sicario, bro, that's my fucking movie, bro. Such a great movie. Wait, is this the second one? I think this is the second one. I'm not really sure. Doesn't matter though. They're actually both pretty good. The first one though, the first one's amazing, bro. I love when he's sitting at the table at the end like this and he's like,
Oh, I forgot about this part. Dude got a bomb. I, honestly, I cannot remember the plot of the second one now. It has something to do with terrorism. I think I watched the Navy SEAL talk about how much he hates movies with shootouts. Probably because they're fake as fuck, bro. If you ever seen a real shootout, bro, pff, that shit's nothing like a movie. First of all, if you're talking about a war shootout, bro, like on average, they last like four hours and nobody hits shit. I'm not going to say nobody hits shit, but, you know, in the movies, it's like, and you get down and they're like, and they just like hit. It's not like that, bro. My figures are shooting like this in real life because they don't want to put their head up and get shot in the face. He can say his actors don't know what the heck they're doing. Oh, yeah. I mean, even that. But, bro, that's not even actors. That's just most people that don't handle weapons on like a very, very, very daily basis. The other day, the U.S. Navy posted a picture of a high-ranking officer on a boat with a rifle like this. Instantly, like, the internet went crazy on him, bro. Like, yo, y'all serious with this picture? Bro, he had the scope on backwards. He still had the dust cover on. Not only that, he had the rifle like this, and he was using his left eye. If you never shot one, then you probably don't know what that means. But the motherfucker's using his left eye, bro, with the shit on his right shoulder. It's the dumbest shit ever. And he was a high-ranking officer in the Navy. Chief's gang. I don't know which YouTube name to call you. Left eye dominant? It doesn't matter, bro. I gotta go to bed, just stopping by for support. Salute, I appreciate you. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it, Rolando, but if you have a rifle on your right shoulder, this is my right shoulder, I don't know what it looks like on the screen because it might be uh, reversed or something, but this is my right shoulder. On my screen, it looks like I'm touching my left shoulder. This is my right shoulder. Uh, we'll say this is my rifle. If I got this shit on my right shoulder, the scope would be this, right? It makes no sense to do this and put my left eye on the scope. You see what I got to do with my head like this to try to get my left eye on there? It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It's on my right shoulder. You could shoot on your left shoulder. Uh, but most people don't do that either. I'm ambidextrous. I actually like doing stuff on my left hand, but I wouldn't shoot like that. But I do know people that do it. <laughs> My high school government teacher was a Marine and he always talked about how clueless officers were with guns. Because they don't have to shoot them, bro. <laughs> Not often, anyways. Unless they're like actually like low level leaders. And you'll be surprised how quickly you can forget that stuff, too. So. They might have known it at one point in time, but like I said, if you're not handling that stuff on a daily basis, like, bro, I haven't touched a weapon since I got out of the army. I did it enough times that I would still know the basics. Like, if I went to a range today with an M16 or an M4, I, would, I wouldn't know what to do. But I would be very rusty, bro. I could make a mistake. Like, not as bad as that picture that I was just telling you about, but maybe, maybe just something, 
something small and just be like, oh, yeah, I forgot you have to do that with these weapons. Just something real small that if someone handled those on a daily basis, they'll be like, really, bro? And I'll just be like, I haven't done it in, like, fucking five years, bro. Sorry. Uh, just, like, even, I just remember when we'd be at the range, sometimes your weapon jams, right? And there's a procedure that you do. It's called sports. Um, where you have to like slap the magazine and all this other stuff, pull the charging handle, whatever. People that don't do it often, they always would be like, ah, my, my weapon jam. They're like, what, uh, what what do I slap again? And it's like, mm -mm. that's what happens when you don't practice, dog. I found a picture you mentioned. The way he has that scope on is comical. That's what I'm saying. But was it, it's really not crazy that he did that because like I said, it's a photo shoot, right? Um, maybe he just really wasn't paying attention or he was distracted by something else. What's really crazy is that he did it. Other people watched. The photographer took a picture of it. People saw this picture before it was published and nobody was like, oh shit, it's on backwards and the thing is fucking covering the scope. He's not looking down shit. Like... it on like it's a cartoon binoculars yeah uh, that picture was just crazy bro very very crazy not to mention like they're on a boat i don't know what he was shooting at but like i said it's a photo shoot i get it you can shoot at whatever you want you can pretend you're shooting at something but i don't know man not great optics not great optics That's just kind of where our military is at these days, man. I remember when I was a kid, it was like at least pretty cool to say that you were in the military or you wanted to join. Now they got like fucking TikTok campaigns where like people are like, yo, do not join the army. It's a scam. So times have changed, man. Times have changed. I remember, I mean, even before I joined and like when I first joined, at least in the South anyways, saying you were in the military could get you a discount on anything, bro. Towards the end, and I would say now, like outside of the South and maybe even in the South, I don't know, bro. Yeah, that shit doesn't mean anything now, bro. Motherfuckers like, bro, we don't care. You're not getting a discount, bro. <laughs> They might even be mad that you served. It's the Navy. They don't do shooting, do they? Not unless they're SEALs. I don't know. I don't know anything about the Navy, to be honest. That's like our rivals, bro. So, no idea. But you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Most everyone in the military handles a weapon. Because you're still in the military. You know what I mean? It's like the Air Force. Like, the Air Force is associated with planes, but those motherfuckers be on the ground, bro. Actually, they're some of the first people to get on the ground. Ironically. Even though they're the Air Force. But like I said, I don't know much about the Navy, so... Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. Don't know what to tell you. Don't know what to tell you. Rolando, you ever tried these, bro? thing that officers white because there would have been mad racial comments if it was a person of color oh yeah for sure for sure but it is what it is remember the first time i watched this movie i wanted to learn sign language in spanish so bad bro 
but then I really weighed the the pros and cons and I was like bro I literally don't know any deaf people in Spanish like I would just have this arsenal of signs for no reason never in my life have I met a deaf person in Spanish I know they exist I just have not encountered them What do you think of the name Life Sandler? Oh, no, no, that's not. Um, I don't know. Damn, I already turned dyslexic for half a second. How the fuck did I do that? Nah, I don't know. I don't think anything of it. Why? I did not know I, until right now I forgot that McAllen was a border town bro why did I think McAllen was somewhere else because the other day I saw a list of uh, the 10 cheapest cities to live in or something like that uh, like in America and McAllen was on there I'm like damn I need to move to McAllen bro but now I'm seeing that shit is literally, bro, like the, the border is, the border gate is behind their house, bro. <laughs> I forgot. Orlando, I wanna know. Oh shit, you just commented. Some guy named his daughter after his favorite football club, Arsenal, but backwards. Bro, I think that's what messed me up, bro. I think my mind was like trying to turn into Arsenal, and I was like, what is going on? I mean, that's weird, but you know, people can, people can do what they wanna do, man. Rolando, have you ever seen these movies? The Sicario movies? See how long have I been on? 95 minutes? I'd probably go to 10.45, maybe 11. Kind of depends on how quiet it is in here. Because I really like this movie. So if it gets too quiet, I'm just going to turn it off and watch this. It's one of my favorite movies, bro. Like I said, the first one's like my favorite of all time. But the second one is okay. said on a news clip the guy in the news was then wondering about the name no, no. <laughs> that's funny I kind of knew you were going to say that why is this movie so quiet Thank you. 
our job to open up the chips of the floor, so we don't have to move forward. Did you think the first one was better than the second one? And what did you think about both of them, bro? To me, the second one was just missing something, bro. I don't know what, but... Did you know that the root of Sicario is the Latin sick or seek, which means to kill? That's why it's in so many chemicals like pesticide and herbicide. A lot of Baylor bears say sick em. Is that why you say sick em? That sounds made up. All the other stuff sounds 100% true. But sick em, I don't know about that one, bro. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why you specifically use Baylor Bears. All around the world, people say. I mean, all in English-speaking places, all around the country, people say "sick boy." I don't know, bro. It's hard for me to trust you on that one. I gotta look that one up. That sounds fake. Yeah, I knew you were wrong about that. It's not true, bro. Sikkim is a, a variant of Sikkim. Because that's what you would tell a dog to do. That means to go after them. But if you got a fucked up accent, it turns into Sikkim. And then... But that's why you don't type it like sick. Because then it was, <laughs> sound like you're telling the dog to throw up on him. That's why we type it with a S I C. But still, the first part of that was very interesting. They're gonna come out with a Sicario 3. There's this army ranger on YouTube that used it to describe his welcome to Ranger Battalion. Used what to describe his welcome?
He said they asked him when, he, when was his last fight. He said they said sick him and they proceeded to whoop his ass. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty pretty normal stuff right there. But like I said, sick him is not from Latin. That's just a normal southern expression right there. Sick him, boy. I'm sitting in your living room. Don't shoot me. He described it as sharpening a blade. What, hazing? Rolando, you never told me if you've eaten these. Honestly, they're really sweet. Ass weapons and Ranger Battalion. I mean, yeah. I think hazing in groups like that is okay. I think hazing in, in, in fraternities, in organizations that don't have to kill people, is stupid. Oh, shit. kill people in war what's 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 getting slapped around you know what I mean but outside of that why are we going out They're good, but they're really sweet. Like, too sweet. Turn 30, we'll do 15 more minutes.
They said an E6 made a mistake in CQB training and they beat his ass for it and kicked him out. He said you gotta earn your stay every day and expect Hub's selection is the easiest part of being a special ops. Probably. I'm not saying he's lying, but a lot of times, like, if you're in an organization and it appears to be elite, if you want to make it more elite or you want to keep it as seen as elite, you would tell stories. You would embellish the truth. I'm not gonna lie, a lot of stories I hear about the military, I'm like, no, that's not true. But also, you gotta think too, like, <sighs> these. <sighs> Every job, every group, everything has smaller sections within those groups, right? So, like, saying special ops really doesn't mean anything, right? Um, it's like saying you're in the CIA. It's like saying you're in the FBI. It's like, but what is your position? What does your unit do, actually? Um, it's like when people say... Like, for instance, I was military intelligence, right? But we got a bunch of different jobs in intelligence, and they're not all equal. Um, we got linguists, we got analysts, we got people that work on equipment and intelligence. We got a lot of different jobs. So they just say, you're like, oh, yeah, in intelligence, we had to do this, this, and this. Well, it's like, well, what part of intelligence were you in? And where were you at while you were doing that? Because all of that stuff matters. I heard that some guy's feet, skin, degloved after a long ruck march. Was it you that told that story? I don't think so, but I've seen it. Like, that's just kind of what happens. Um, I actually, the worst I ever had was like a, a tender heel. But I actually never got any blisters. I never got anything crazy like that. My body, besides what just happened to me, is usually pretty resilient, bro. It's kind of hard for me to develop something. But yeah, I would see that all the time, bro. So people have to take like all these precautions, bro. They gotta like have like a whole bunch of different pairs of socks and they have to like let their feet dry and shit like that, bro. Sometimes like, I mean, I would have to bring it because it was on the packing list. But like when we would stop to change socks and shit, I'd be like, bro, I'm not taking all this shit off, bro. <laughs> like, my feet are not going to get blistered just because my socks are wet. Like, it's just not going to happen. I also feel like it has something to do with the way they wear their boots or like what kind of boots they have, bro. Because I, I like, my feet were never like uncomfortable in my boots. I wear my boots real tight. So they're not, my feet aren't sliding around in there, or they weren't, I should say. And I had comfortable Nike boots, and I don't know, man. It would be like if you walked all day in tennis shoes. I would never get blisters from walking all day in tennis shoes. And my feet would hurt after rocking, but that's normal. Very normal, actually. Yeah, there's just one dude in the 75th Ranger Regiment who says he doesn't feel fully accepted because he was 11 Charlie. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's different, bro. You're an 11 Bang Bang. You're not, you're not 11 Bravo, bro. You're not. <laughs> you're essentially not the infantry. <laughs> Not to them, anyways. <laughs> so I see what you're saying about not everyone doing the same thing. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's different. Like, 
like I said, saying you were in a group or you did a certain thing kind of doesn't mean anything. It's kind of like uh, even the, the linguist in intelligence, right? <sighs> some of them really, really knew the language that they learned and some of them didn't, bro. And so sometimes people will tell me like, oh, well, this is the best way to learn language because at DLI they do this and those linguists come out blah, blah, super sharp. I'm like, bro, I worked with those dudes. Like, no, all of them don't come out super sharp. Some of them fucking suck. Some people are just better at grasping languages. Some people take it more seriously. Some people spend their a long time doing it as well. Whatever. Just different. There's different levels of it. So everyone is not the same. And that's getting really specific. But even still, like I said, just even in intelligence, we have like fucking geospatial people. We got certain stuff I can't say, but we got all kinds of people. So, but there's one group that I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say. But there's one group that does real general intelligence work with open source information. And open source information is good, but I'm just saying like, sometimes open source people act like they're the fucking CIA or something. Like they, they do like the craziest shit. Like, don't forget I was intelligent so I can, it's like, bro, you, you use open source information. Don't act like you can fucking hack people's computers and shit. Bro. Like, stop. Fucked up thing is that he still had to go through Aspen Ranger School and it's still not fully going to the boys. Well, that's what happens when you want to belong to a group, bro. That's his own fault. You know what, man? For my job, I got attached to infantry groups and special forces groups all the time, bro. Like I said, I can't fully describe it. I think I'm literally not allowed to, but just know that it would be me and a whole bunch of infantry dudes, a whole bunch of special forces dudes. And, you know, uh, they would try to be tough guys at first because they were used to, like, they were used to nerds in my job. So they would be like, hey, man, we don't need you to do shit. Just stay in the back until we get to blank, and then you can do blank. And I'd be like, that's cool with me, bro. I don't want to fucking talk to y'all. I don't, I don't fucking care, bro. If y'all don't need me at all, I won't fucking do anything. And, you know, I just didn't give a fuck if they wanted me to be in there or not. And then when they needed me, I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, I need this shit, huh? I was always cool at every group I got into, but that's because, like I said, I didn't give a fuck, bro. <laughs> if you want me to be a part of the group, I'll be cool with y'all if y'all are cool. But if not, whatever. I'm here to do my job anyways, bro. When you were in Ramstein, you got me confused with somebody else, bro. I played a few basketball games in Ramstein. I was never stationed in Ramstein. this when you were in Germany? No, oh, I was in Germany as a kid, bro. I went to Baumholder when I was like five months old. Uh, I went to Bamberg when I was like in first grade. And uh, my family went to Heidelberg when I was like 17, 18. No, I was not deployed to Afghanistan. I was not deployed to Afghanistan or Iraq. Man, I can't tell you where I went anyways. But it was neither of those two places.
Uh oh, she's about to get kidnapped. Still here, yeah, I'm still here, Evelyn. Probably for another five to ten minutes, maybe. Just depends. What am I watching now? I'm watching uh, a movie called Sicario. Hey, have you ever seen it? So where did you work with special ops? You just said you can't specify. Yeah, I definitely cannot tell you that, bro. Definitely not. But even when I didn't go places with them, I always train with them. I train with, like I said, we always do like joint exercises because the things that they do, they need me to do them or they need someone like me to do them. That's the thing, like, in a movie, there's some cool guy that can do everything, right? But in real life, everyone's good at their one job and you need like a whole squad of people to do it or depending on what you're trying to do, right? If I wanna use indirect fire, I need the fucking artillery people, right? If I wanna kick down some doors, I need the infantry people. So it just depends on what you need to do. If you need some intelligence, you need intelligence people because y'all are not intelligence. Y'all don't know how to fucking do it. And the funniest thing about my job, I'm always, I gotta be real careful with the stuff that I say, but the funniest thing about my job was that a lot of the stuff that we did on its own has no security clearance. But once you put one thing with another thing, it becomes top secret. And I don't know how to explain that further without actually saying like what it is. But okay, actually I'll give you an example. Like, this speed stick, right? This speed stick is fine. I can say speed stick. But if this was for some purpose in a mission, once I say speed stick and one other thing that makes it military related, it now becomes top secret because it kind of gives away what I'm doing. So there's a lot of everyday items that I was not allowed to say the names of, especially technology. And so now it feels really weird to say them. But like I said, I can't tell you what items because saying the items is also going to give away the shit that I was doing that we're technically not supposed to be doing. I can say that because I'm not telling you what I'm doing. Edwin, you should watch it. It's a good movie. The first Sicario is really good. The second one is different, but it's good. Part about Sicario is how the government gets the cartels to end fight. Yeah, kidnap the prince and the king will start the war. Are there really five people in here? Sometimes I think that number at the top is fake. Can you remind me what was your MOS? 35 November. But you're not gonna figure out what we do because my job's top secret. <laughs> so, you know, the funniest thing about my job is that since they can't tell you what the job is, there's like a fake description on like the army website. When you're doing all of your stuff, they're like, oh, you're gonna be like uh, James Bond. We can't tell you what you're gonna do, but you're gonna be doing some cool stuff. Bro, you get to your fucking training, bro. And they're like, all right, this is what you're really going to be doing. We can't put that shit on the internet. And we're like, what the? I would have never signed up for this shit, bro. But I mean, like I said, just think about it. It has a top secret clearance. I had the highest security clearance that you can get. Like when, they, when I got my security clearance, bro, they were literally contacting people that I hadn't talked to in like 15 years, bro. Like literally my childhood, childhood friends, like from second, first kindergarten, bro, asking my teachers from 
first grade did I get sent to the principal's office? Did I was I a troublemaker as a little kid and stuff like that? Man, people would hit me up on Facebook. They'll be like, hey, bro, are you in trouble, man? Some dudes in some suits showed up to my house asking blah, blah, blah. And they said they were with the government doing a security thing, but it seemed kind of fishy. I didn't really want to tell them stuff. And I'm like, damn, bro, haven't seen you in 10 years. But yeah, no, that's that's real. I'm not in trouble. So, but yeah, like I said, with that information in mind, they can't just put like, oh yeah, this is the job. This is the very secret thing that you do. So you can't actually find out until you get there. Rolando's from Texas, bro. We're Texas boys. I was born in Mexico. I probably could never get a security clearance. You get a security clearance, it'll be hard for you to get a top secret one. Lots of people, lots of people from other countries join the American military to get citizenship. I had a, when I first joined, I had a friend that went through uh, basic training. And he had to make a decision to renounce his Brazilian citizenship to to go further into our the job that I do. They're like, bro, you cannot even, you're not getting this clearance while being a Brazilian citizen. It's not gonna happen. Uh, and he actually dropped out, bro. He refused to renounce his Brazilian citizenship because he said his grandma was sick or something. And uh, he actually just left. It was the weirdest thing ever. I'm like, what did you think was gonna happen, bro? You can't join another military and not renounce a citizenship. It's been a long time, so I don't remember that situation 100%, but I just remember he was having troubles renouncing his citizenship and ultimately decided not to do it, however that works. I don't even know. But yeah, there was a lot of people I knew that applied for the top secret clearance at the same time that I did that didn't get it. And it seemed to be over pretty petty stuff. Uh, like drinking too much and stuff like that. If, if anyone says they've seen you blackout drunk, you're not getting a top secret clearance. Nobody's ever seen me blackout drunk. Joined to get citizenship, meaning not a citizen. At the time I've been listening, meaning a ton, ton of MOS off limits. Maybe, like I said, that dude, what was his name? Coelho? Coelho? His name was like Coelho. I don't, even, I don't remember his last name. Something like that, but I just remember he was Brazilian. Uh, he was headed towards my job. Like I said, they wouldn't give it to him because... He uh, wouldn't renounce his citizenship, but he was he was on the way to getting it. Cause what they do first is they give you a ah uh, uh, man, I can't think of the word. It's a synonym for temporary, but it's very specific in this case to say that you do not have a top secret clearance. It's like a provisional, it's, but it's not provisional. So it's a synonym to provisional too, but you have a provisional security clearance. And so they're like, you can start this training, but it's like, if you get to, they don't clear your shit, we're kicking you out basically. So I wanna say he had a provisional security clearance, 
but he wouldn't renounce his citizenship, so they're like, the fuck out of here. I'm guessing no school suspensions for weed. Cool. School suspensions for weed, what does that mean? Sebastian Gorka, I don't know who that is. Sebastian Gorka couldn't get top secret clearance. No idea who that is, bro. Sebastian Corpo. Since you can't be seen and passed out drunk, I imagine you cannot also have school suspensions for weed. Hell no, bro. <laughs> Fuck no. Weed's illegal. You definitely, Rev, they, if they know that you smoked weed, you're not going to get the clearance. This is, that's anything. That's even the cops, bro. If you smoke weed before, you can't be a cop. But you just have to be able to lie your way through that. But like I said, if they find out, yeah, you're definitely 100% not getting it. 100% in fact if you've been suspended at all you're probably not gonna get it because like I said that kind of shows a rebellious nature. When they're handing out top secret clearances, bro, they're looking for the most straight edge motherfuckers ever because you have the nation's secrets. You can't, you know, like if there's a hint that you rebel against authority, that you can't keep your mouth closed, that you like attention too much, stuff like that, bro, they're like, yeah, no, this guy would be a horrible choice. Sebastian Gorka, deputy assistant to the president and strategist in the Trump White House. Mm. I didn't even recognize his name, bro. He had to get the boots since he couldn't get the clearance. What kind of shitty ass history does he have, bro? Honestly, like if you're if you're already doing something like important and they couldn't get him a clearance, that means he's done something bad, bro. Like something that they're like, eh, we can't look past this. Cause like I said, that shit's basically a risk assessment. They're just like, what's the chances that this guy spills his guts for the most part? Uh, because we've had some people in the past that have done that. Nazi affiliation in some other country. Yeah, that's a good way to not get a clearance. But yeah, um, can't even remember Chelsea Manning at the time was Jeremy Manning I think Chelsea Manning and then the dude that fled to Russia I can't fucking think of his name right now bro but he's the more famous one that 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 spilled our secrets what's his name I know you know his name I just can't think of it but uh yeah those two dudes well not one's not a dude anymore Chelsea Manning those two people they made it even harder bro they made our lives a lot more difficult that was a, that was the reason that i knew i wasn't gonna do my job forever like when i got out and stuff 
Cause bro, like when you're from my job, you can't have electronics on you, cause they don't obviously they don't want you like recording or transmitting information to somebody else. Snowden, yes, bro, I could not think of his name for shit. Uh, but both of them essentially did what I do or did. They did what I did, and like I said, because of them, random checks all the time. Like I said, you can do shit, bro. Everything under super watch, bro. And like I said, they made it harder to get clearances too. Manning released vids of Apaches killing civilians, right? I don't remember, to be honest. Here's the thing though, bro, and I'm not justifying it because in no way is that okay. But when you sign up for a job like that, cause this is not like a Boeing whistleblower or something. Like Boeing's a civilian company. They're not supposed to be doing shitty stuff that would kill people. When you sign up to do some top secret shit, you're already signing up for a murderous organization. Like you, it's, this is the fucking military, bro. Like they kill people. I don't think you can just decide to be like, fuck this. I'm gonna put everybody else at risk and, and leak this information. I just don't think that's okay, bro. That's just me though. I know they have their own morals and they thought they were doing what was right, but I'm just like, bro, what are you really changing? Now you've just made the civilian opinion of the government worse. You made our position in the world worse. Cause now people, like, now you're under more watch. Like I said, again, um, I just don't think it helps anything, bro. You just created more distrust. That's all. My boy has a top secret clearance as a ranger. It's dope. Yeah, I, uh, Man, I don't miss doing any of that shit, to be honest. Apparently Snowden released info about submarine routes. That's what I'm saying though, bro. Like, he released a lot of stuff. But I'm like, what are you accomplishing with this, bro? And I really didn't understand. I really don't understand when people do that shit. Because you can't live a normal life after that, bro. What you rate that movie you're watching? Uh, this is the second Sicario, so I would give this an eight out of 10. I think the first one's 10 out of 10. I just, it's something about the storyline of the second one that's just like a little too slow for me and it never goes to a place that I would want it to go. And the first one was crazy lit. Story starts off fast, then it gets real slow, then it ends crazy. This one to me, it seems like it's setting up a movie after it, but I think I just still like it because I like the first one so much. But the first one, absolutely 10 out of 10. Pompeo and Petraeus are bad name, badass names for a military officer. Yeah, they sound like they're in the military. They call that a, what is it? Nominative determinism. Those dudes were like destined to go to the military, right? <laughs> I said I was gonna get off at 10.45. Y'all got me, y'all was good. Every time I say I'm gonna get off, y'all start asking stuff and I'll be like, ah, gotta answer that. Well, I'm already past 11. I like ending on even numbers or the quarters. So I gotta say 11.15 now. 11.10 is just too weird.
So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say 11, 15. They're basically Roman general names. Yeah, that's what it sounds like, basically. Living in the real world. What y'all up to, man? It's late on a Wednesday night. Releasing info about ourselves might prove detrimental in a war against China. Who knows? We got a lot of those snakes like that, though, man. Remember I told you maybe like six months to a year ago, these two dudes got caught selling information about the military to China? I just don't. <sighs> bro, unless it's like $50 million, I just don't see how that would be worth it, bro. I remember when I saw them get locked up and I looked at the price, I'm like, bro, $15,000, that's it? Like, bro, do you realize that's treason, bro, when you get caught? That's not like 30 days in jail or something, bro. You're in trouble, bro. And if you ever get out, uh, <laughs> I feel like it's going to be real hard for you to get a job. I feel like they're going to intentionally fuck your life up. So, if I were to betray, which I wouldn't, I'm not even going to finish that sentence because I feel like someone's going to fly to South America and get me. But if I were to betray, bro, you have to give me like 50 mil, bro. Because I need to pay for the lawyer when I get caught because I'm going to get caught. I need to have some money when I get out. And I just have to hope that they give me like five years or less. But sheesh, bro. Dude's doing it for 5000 15000 bro. Selling the nation's secrets for $15,000? What kind of financial trouble are you in, bro? Must got dudes like about to break their legs, like bookies or something, bro. I figure Russia keeps knowing the lie despite Washington, right? Uh, I always wondered that too, bro. I just... I always wonder why they took him in. I guess that, but, like, at what point are you just like, you know what, fuck this dude. Like, kick him out of here, too. Like, you would think, like, at some point, they're like, yo, we could use this dude. Like, I think he he would be in trouble, like, if Putin dies or something or gets replaced. That's when he might have to worry about being in trouble. I'm pretty sure Washington can afford more than 50 million in lawyer fees. I'm talking about me. I'm just saying for some kind of lawyer that's not like a public defender, I'm gonna need some good money. No one can trust a traitor. That's why you might figure you having to leave the country. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. When I leave the country, I need 50 mil, baby. I need 50 mil so I can come live here for the rest of my life or something like that. 15,000? That's not going to do nothing for me, bro. I wouldn't even take that. I wouldn't even do like... I wouldn't even do a dare for 15,000, bro. Like, that's just not enough money for me to do anything out of out of the ordinary. What would I do for 15k? What's the craziest thing I'll do for 15k? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I would do for 15k. Anything that I feel like is embarrassing, I need a lot of money to do it. 15 is just not enough. I heard Soviet Russia used to cremate traders. I feel like that's not that bad. I think there's things far worse than dying, bro. 
Like those dudes that just attack Russia, oh, they were fucking those dudes up, bro. I would much rather die than get tortured. Like I don't know if you ever like uh, watched anything about Saddam Hussein, but if you look into like what he was doing to people, bro, ooh, those punishments were bad, bro. Like cutting dudes nuts off and stuff. Like, oh my god, bro. I actually watched a video like that on Twitter the other day. It was so disgusting, bro. Some, uh, I want to say some Israeli troops caught some dude. No. Was it, was it Ukraine? I can't even remember. That's how, that's how bad it was, bro. But this dude was alive, bro. He was alive and they had him pinned down and. They cut his joint off, bro. They cut his nuts off. Oh, my God. It makes my stomach hurt, bro. That video is disgusting, bro. And he never, like, passed out from the pain. He just screamed. But I'm like, oh, my God. They just castrated this dude with a butter knife, bro. Oh, God. My stomach is hurting, bro. Yeah, that was bad. That was bad. I know there's more to life than sex, but... Bro, if they cut me up, if they cut it off, bro, just please kill me right after that, bro. That's crazy. That is very crazy. I've heard about Saddam's sex palace. I don't know about his sex palace, but I know about his tortures. It's 11.08. I said I was going to get off at 11.15. I have to make sure not to let it pass. Or else I'm going to have to stay until Eleven oh nine. What you got for me in my last minutes here, Rolando? Is it Shia Muslim Iman in Dearborn, Michigan, who still supports the invasion? The invasion of what? The invasion of the Middle East. Makes sense though, right? Because they were his nemesis. Oh, Iraq. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's still stupid to support that. This was essentially for nothing. Oh, my tattoo's vision. They're almost in my favorite part of the movie where the sign language happens. I still kind of want to learn sign language in Spanish, but like I said, when am I going to use that shit, bro? But here's the thing. I say that, and I'm going to meet someone that's deaf, and I'm going to be like, yo, what if I would have just started learning sign language in Spanish, bro? I need, to, well, I need a deaf person to teach me. That's the problem. Where's that quote from? Capture, capture Prince and the King will start the war? It's from Sicario. I mean, I don't know where he got it from, but it's from the movie.
needs to go no more and more and more. There's a big fat policeman at the door, door, door. If you open the door, he'll pee on the floor. Damn, it sounds like a quote from an art of war. It could be. I wouldn't be surprised. Honestly, I've grown to dislike that book. I don't dislike the book. I just dislike when people talk about the book. Art of War, 48 Laws of Power. Like, motherfuckers go to jail and read those two books, bro, and just think they're smarter than everyone in the world, bro. And I'm just like, bro, is these the only two books they offer in jail or what, bro? Every dude that I know that doesn't actually read has read those two books. Or at least read those two books. And they're always just like, never outshine the master. And I'm like, why are you saying that? That doesn't even apply here, bro. Like, what are you talking about? Also, the prince. Yeah, that's true. That one less, though. I feel like that was... Uh, no, actually, yeah, no, that's, that's brought up a fair amount, too. Ooh, it's about to get good. Eleven thirteen. Let's see if I actually get off at. Oh, it's eleven fourteen. Let's see if I actually get off at eleven fifteen. I have to not get distracted. That means no good questions. I wanted to mention I was reading The Prince and the guy I recommended the Forty Eight Laws of Power. I told you, bro. All those books, those three books are connected. I love when people ask me, "Have I ever heard of them?" Like. Like it's some secret shit. Like, yo, you ever heard of The Art of War by Sun Tzu? You should read that, bro. I'm like, yeah, I've heard of it, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, those are prison books. Damn, they going crazy. They going nuts, bro. Oh, I gotta stay with my eyes on the clock. So when it hits 11.15, oh, it just said 11.15. I'm about to get off. What's up? It was warm here. Warm? Yes, I lost the battery to the AC. Remote. All right, y'all, I'm getting off because it's 11.15. Thanks for joining and see y'all next time. Do you know how much I'm